Zero Accounting Software 2023. Pay employees. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage going into the new company file we set up in a prior presentation. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. That being get great guitars. We're going to duplicate some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top so we can duplicate it. Right click in the duplicated tab so we can duplicate it. Back to the tab to the left, accounting drop down. We want to go into that balance sheet report. And then we're going to tab to the right, accounting drop down, go into the income statement report. Back to the tab to the left so we can change that date range. Hitting the drop down, I want a custom date range. I'm going into 2023 and the end December 31st. That's the home on this range that we want for that date range. Then we're gonna go to the tab to the right. The range looks good here, so we're good to go. I'm gonna go to the first tab and now we're thinking about the processing of payroll. So I wanna reiterate every time we look at this processing of the payroll, although it gets a little bit tedious to do so because I think it's quite important to note that there's multiple different ways that you can be dealing with payroll. And obviously payroll is one of those things that will differ from location to location. Even if you're in a one particular country, it could change from location to location like in the United States because the state taxes uh, could be different and, and it's going to add a layer on top of the federal taxes that you have to deal with. And if you're in other countries outside of the United States, you're going to have your own kind of laws that you have to deal with there in terms of both the accounting that you have to deal with, which might include payroll taxes of some shape or form, and human resources are often attached to uh, the payroll as well, which you have to be in compliance with as well. That kind of ties in with the whole accounting process. And so now you've got the HR accounting side of things, as well as the actual bookkeeping side of things, both of which can get quite complicated. Now, the two general ways that you can deal with payroll is you could do payroll within the accounting system, within zero, with the integration of Gusto. So you can turn on Gusto if you hit the drop down here. If you hadn't turned it on, there'd be Gusto here. And then you're going to have a payroll up top. And then here's your payroll tab, which you can process uh, within Gusto. So for me personally, even if I'm not using Gusto, I do everything with Gusto anyways, just because not, not that Gusto, but like I just do things with Gusto, you know. But in any case, you got your payroll that you can process within uh, the Zero system. Your other option is to process payroll with the help of a third party payroll processor. And in the United States, these are becoming more and more common because of the complexities with payroll. Payrolls become quite complex uh, and therefore, and it's tied to human resources oftentimes. So sometimes even if you don't have that many employees, it could be useful to outsource the payroll to uh, a third party. In which case, what do you need to do in zero? You need to get the information necessary to get your financial statements correct for reporting purposes, internal decision-making purposes, and for the United States, income tax preparation purposes. So a quick look over here on our flowchart. Remember that employees is basically the same as the vendor cycle. This is, this is a QuickBooks desktop flowchart, but we're just looking at it to look at the normal accounting flow. Uh, if it wasn't for the laws related to employees and withholdings and that kind of stuff, paying employees would just be like any other vendor. It'd be like paying a contractor. You would just pay, you, cut, you shake hands and you pay them after the work is done, right? But because of all the laws and human resources and whatnot, now you have the, a whole specialized field that has been created through all these laws and regulations and whatnot. Uh, and on our accounting side, one of the major things we have to deal with is 
the withholdings. Now, if we do withholdings for payroll taxes and possibly other things like healthcare and, and whatnot, then that's gonna force us to deviate from a cash-based system to an accrual-based system if we're processing the payroll within the zero accounting system because we're gonna have to track all the withholdings that we take out, which are gonna be accrual activities. That's gonna be a liability that we're gonna have to deal with. We're also gonna have to store all this data within our zero system, which is tracking everything per employee as well as per paycheck per employee and year to date information. So we're gonna have a whole lot of other reports that are necessary and they're gonna be necessary to help us also with the preparation of in the United States, our tax forms, which include generally quarterly tax preparation, those being the 941s, yearly tax preparations form 940, W2 forms, W3 forms, and uh, and so on. So. So again, the, the system can help us to do that, but it puts a lot of more information if you're running it through Gusto. The other way that you can do this is if you had someone in a third party uh, processing the payroll, then you don't need to pull in all the detail. You can pull in basically just what you need to create the financial statements and reconcile uh, your bank account. So we talked a little bit in prior presentations on how to set up Gusto, but we're not gonna set it up in our practice problem. Uh, because it requires a link to uh, the bank accounts. So what I'm gonna do is just basically run through a quick payroll problem, imagining we have a, a simplified version of payroll in Excel to calculate what the payroll kind of looks like, and then also kind of mirror the reports that you might get from a third party processor, like uh, like a Paychex or an ADP, I'm not advertising for them, but those are the, like the bigger ones and and then you can and then how would you take that information and put it into your accounting system so let's just imagine we have a payroll report that we're going to put together in excel so uh i'm gonna i'm gonna now i'm gonna create this if you don't want to create it in excel you can just use the excel worksheet here and plug this and imagine that you got this from a third-party payroll processor or this is in essence what would be processed within zero with gusto if you're processing within the system so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this fairly fast. I'm gonna right click on the tab here. I've highlighted the whole thing. I'm gonna format the cells. I wanna go to currency. And then I usually like negative numbers to be bracketed. And then I'm gonna go no, none of that and no dollar sign. And we'll have uh, two decimals, okay. Then I'm gonna increase the size of the sheet. So I'm gonna hold control and scroll up. You can also do it down here. I'm at 120% the size. And then I'm just going to make a, a, a payroll register type of form. So I'm going to start with the name. I'm just going to put my headers of the register, total earnings. Notice that I, or you might call it gross earnings. Let's say gross is probably better. Gross earnings. Your earnings are gross. No, they're, you're, you're gross. Anyway, social security, social, social security. And then these are the taxes that are taken out for uh, for the United States. Let's start with actually federal income tax, which we can abbreviate with FIT. And then you have social security and Medicare, which are the FICA taxes. So I'll say social security and then Medicare. So that's what we have to base. We're mandated on a federal side to withhold in the United States. You might have different or similar kind of structures, withholdings in other places as well. Uh, but, you know, obviously, again, taxes are going to be part of accounting that's specific by location. And then I'm going to make a, a Social Security adjustment because I need to tie into my bank register and I have a, a, a calculation adjustment to do that. And then I'll show you that in a second. And then we've got uh, the 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 income tax, and then we've got the net pay. That's going to give us the net pay. And then I'm also going to have the employer taxes for Social Security and Medicare that I'll show you as well. So that's going to be our headers. So I'm going to select this whole thing. Why is this over here? And then I'm also gonna have a social security adjustment again for the employer taxes. So 
Maybe I should pull this down. I'm going to pull this down one. I'm going to pull it down here. And then just to note, this, these are FICA taxes. So I'll say this is FICA taxes. And I'll select these two. And I'm going to, to I'm not going to merge across like this. I'm going to right click and then format this. And then I like to go to alignment and do this center across like that. And so those are FICA taxes and I'll make them a different color to note that those are kind of linked together. And so let's make that like dark blue and then white, something like that. I'll make the whole thing bold so it's easier to see. And then I'm also gonna copy that and put it here. And I actually have an adjustment. I should make it go across this whole thing here. Let's format format this again. Format cells, align, center across the three of them like that. All right, that's better. Mucho mejor. Okay, and then I'm going to say, let's make these all black and white. I'm going to go up top and say, let's make this black and then white and let's center them and then let's check the spelling i'm sure i misspelled something right no really serious i think spell check is broken that never happens so we're gonna say okay and then our two employees let's say are adam hamilton i'm not sure if i spelled that right either but that's what it says on adam's uh w4 form so we anyways we're gonna say there it is. Now the FIT, the federal income tax, is the employee's federal income tax, and it would be dependent on what they gave us on their W-4. So I can't just use a flat tax rate. This is the main tax, which is quite complicated in the United States, because I have to look at tables to figure it out based on the information they provide us on like at the W-4. So I'm just going to make up a number here. It's not, uh, you know, it would be totally dependent on what they give us. So I'm just gonna make up 720 on the income tax. And then the social security is a flat tax to some degree. In other words, I could just say, if that's your earnings, I'm gonna say this is times 0 .062. Uh, so I'm gonna say that, that that should be somewhat straightforward calculation. Although once Adam hits the cap, there is a cap as well on social security. So then it gets messed up there too. So again, even though it looks simple right here, when you combine all this stuff together, it gets quite complex quite quickly, especially if you have multiple employees and then you've got caps and whatnot. And then the Medicare is gonna be equal to, it's also a flat tax, the gross earnings, which we're saying his gross earnings are 4583.33. And then we'll divide this or times this by 0.0145 because that's the Medicare rate uh, typically. And, and by the way, this, this number here is 60,000 a year, I think, divided by 12. No, this is gonna be 55,000 divided by 12. That's where we're getting this number, monthly pay. So they, we might pay people monthly, which is what we're gonna do here for the practice problem, or bi-weekly, semi-monthly, or weekly. And then I'm gonna make an adjustment to Social Security so I can tie out to my uh, amount on our bank reconciliation, which we'll talk about later. So this is kind of a, a mess up here, but I need to tie out to that number. So we're gonna make a little bit of an adjustment. So the net pay then is gonna be equal to uh, this minus this minus this minus this minus my adjustment. So it's gonna be the 357 uh, 357270, that's going to be the net check, which ties out to 357270. 357270. So that's the net check that's going to come out of our checking account. These are withholdings that we're going to have to take from the employee before they even uh, get their money. And we're mandated to do that in the United States on the federal side. And you might also have state withholdings that are required as well, depending on what states you are in. And then you might have what's called like voluntary withholdings, such as benefit programs like a 401k plan or some Medicare, that kind of medic, medical insurance and that kind of stuff uh, that, that would be 
volunteer withholdings that they can opt into if they so choose. These are mandatory. All right, so then we've got the Social Security. Also, on the employer side, we have to pay uh, social our portion of Social Security and Medicare. So I'm going to say these are FICA. These are going. I'm going to say these are in employer taxes. So this. So they have to match Social Security and Medicare. So this is what they're paying over and above. And then I'm also going to make an adjustment because I messed up and I, on uh, when I did the calculations in the practice problem. <laughs> so then we're going to say Erica, Erica Smith, let's say, and we'll say that she earned 2,400 and her FIT, we're just going to make up an FIT because it would be dependent on tables and her, uh, what she told us on the, on her W-4, but the social security somewhat straightforward would be the gross pay times 0.062. Uh, that's the employee portion and the Medicare is 2,400 times 0.0145 generally. And then I don't have an adjustment cause I didn't mess that one up. I don't think. And then we're going to say this equals the sum. Let's do it this way. This equals this number minus the sum let's do it this way this time of these three which is the same thing in essence of this minus this minus this minus this and then i can say all right the social security and medicare over here is going to have to match on the employer side and then there we have that so that looks good okay and then i'm going to put a box around this I think I did that properly. And now let's say that's our only two employees. Now this is something if we did inside of zero, that zero would basically make this data for us so they can help us put, and then it would post it automatically to the financial statements, but it also has to give this data to the clients in the form of a coupon stub or something like that. And it has to track this information on an employee by employee level on a both paycheck by paycheck as well as year to date level to give it to the employee and to populate the forms that we need for reporting purposes 941 940 w2 w3 and so on uh so again if you if you did this externally all of that stuff would be done by the third party provider and they might provide us with a report which would look something like this which we would then have to just simply take and put into our system to make our financial statements correct. So let's imagine that's the case. What would the journal entry look like? If it was done internally, the journal entry done by Gusto within zero. If it's done externally, the journal entry we would have to put in the system based on this payroll register provided by the third party payroll provider so that we can get our financial statements correct, but not needing all the detail. So. I, c I can imagine a journal entry for each employee and we can imagine combining the journal entry to one large journal entry. So for example, let's say that we have, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll say that this is going to be, uh, the date let's, I'm going to add another right click and insert, and I'll just put the date over here. This will be uh, date. And then I'm going to say, this is going to be for a journal entry and then i'm going to say adam two tabs and then i'll skip one maybe and erica two tabs skip one total something like that and so we're going to say the date i'm going to make this a date field home tab number making it a short date and this is going to be on two uh, to, let's say one, uh, 31. So I say, okay, two thousand. what in the world? That's quite long. Does it need to be that long? Ah, whatever. All right. And so then let's make this black and white up top. I'll make, I'll make this whole thing black and white. So I'll go black, white. Let's center this one. This one, I'm going to center across these two right clicking format sales center across those two. And then I'm going to format paint that and center this one across these two and then format paint that and center this one across these two. All right. Okay. And so then 
I'm going to say that we're going to have the journal entry for Adam is going to be payroll expense. The payroll expense is going to be the total that Adam earned, 4583.33. But I'm going to put the cash down. Well, I'll put it up here. The payroll liability, meaning we didn't give him 4583 We only gave him 3572.70 because we withheld the sum of FIT, Social Security, Medicare, and then this adjustment, which is the, you know, the adjustment I had to put in there. And then we had cash. So he only got cash checking account, which is this needs to be a negative. I'm going to put credits as negatives. If you don't know debits and credits, that's okay. But I like to make my credits negative because it's easier. And then so the so the difference is that which is the paycheck so, or in other words, he earned that he got paid that the difference is the withholdings that we took from him, which he in theory is the one paying to the government, even though we are the tax collector. In essence, the government's forcing us to be the tax collector taking his money to pay the government. All right, I can also think about that as Erica. So I'm going to do the same journal entry, but the Erica over here. So I'm going to say Erica had net pay of 2,400, but we took from Erica the negative sum of FIT, Social Security and Medicare, because the government made us do it. It's not our fault, Erica. And so the negative sum of this, the plug, is the 185640. So in other words, she earned that. She got that. We took this from her. We don't get to keep that. We have to pay it to the government on her behalf because the government has made us their little lapdog tax collector through coercion. So if we then sum up the totals here, we sum up the totals and we sum this up equals the sum of these, these and this. We can think of this as if it's just one large one employee in other words we can think of one journal entry for every for both of them for all of our employees we can think of the payroll as one payroll transaction if we combine all the accounts together uh and so when we put it into our accounting system what's the impact on the accounting system well it's the total so so it's so we could think okay the gross earnings are are uh this these two let's actually sum this up that'd be good Let's insert, I'm going to insert something and put the total here. Total equals the sum of these two. And I'll just sum it across. How about them apples? Those are some good apples. All right. So then we're going to say, so then the total is this for both of them. And then we took from both of them a total of these uh, 155423 and our and and so there and so then the net check for both of them is the 5429 uh, so we could just do one journal entry now we have to be careful to do one journal entry because it's going to show up on our checking account so we want to be able to reconcile so if i just to put one journal entry in place it's going to be a little bit more difficult to reconcile but you could you know do that and it would be and that would be one way to work. But there's a, one other thing that happens that we have to deal with on 13123, and that's the employer taxes, which we have not yet paid, but we've incurred them based on the employee earnings. And so that would be uh, payroll taxes, which are the sum of these, and the and then the payroll liability. Actually, we and we could do this like employee by employee if we wanted to, which would be, but we don't need to do that. Let's just do the total. I'll put it out here, the sum of these. And so there we have it. So, so when we, so when I put this in, in and so there's no, there's no cash involved with this transaction because we have not yet paid it. We will pay it in the future. So note, like when I put this into my system, then I could do it as a lump total of all the payroll together because I don't need all the detail. Uh, but you might want to put it in check by check because it might make it easier to reconcile. 
And then this transaction uh, is doesn't have cash in, affected as well. So we can enter that as like a journal entry into the system. Now notice that if you're a bookkeeper, you might try to do this on a cash based system. You might say, hey, look, can I can I run my zero system on a cash based system and allow the third party processor to process these paychecks? And you kind of can, right? Because if you're in the United States, for example, you can have the third party processor process the paychecks and then uh, and then you can you can enter them or you can wait till the paychecks actually clear the bank, right? When they clear the bank, there's going to be the net checks that come through and just record the net checks when they go through the bank, which is you're going to see on our side in the bank feeds as payroll expense, right? If we do that, we're what are we missing? We're missing the breakout of the payroll liabilities, the accrual components. However, once we pay the payroll liabilities, then we'll be back. It's just a timing difference. We'll be back in play. So, so you might, if, if you have a small business and you're trying to run the payroll just to get your taxes calculated for payroll and for your federal income taxes at the end of the year, you might be able to do just a year end adjustment. You might be able to work with a third party processor, have them deal with all the payroll stuff, the 941s, the 940s and so on. You do your zero automating zero, waiting till the payrolls clear the bank and just recording them on a cash based system to payroll noting that's not perfect because you're missing the accrual components but then at the end of the year working with a tax preparer and or cpa firm that can take the payroll reports as of year end and make a year end adjustment to properly record the payroll as of the end of the year so that you can do whatever you need to do including do your income taxes with it okay that said I'm going to enter it into our system as two checks, right? These are the two checks that are going to clear uh, the system. And then we'll enter a payroll liability with a journal entry to kind of mirror what we have here. All right. So let's go back on over and finally just make our two checks. So I'm going to call it uh, a plus button and I'm just going to say it's a money out form. So spend money form and I'm going to enter it. It's going to go out of the checking account. Also note that if you're dealing with a third party processor, you might set up another checking account just for payroll, because sometimes it's easier to deal with payroll when, when you only have one account that deals with it. That means you transfer money out of the checking account into payroll just to process the payroll. And that way, all of your payroll transactions are in one checking account, which can make it easier if there's like an issue, but we're not going to do that. So we're going to say this is going to be Adam Hamilton, we're just going to set them up as a contact because we're doing the payroll uh, outside. Imagine it's a third party payroll processor. We're going to say that the date is going to be Jan uh, 31st, Jan 31. And then I'm not going to have any item. Uh, we're going to say description. I'll say payroll and it's going to be then the amount of the 4583.33 that's going to go to payroll expense so payroll tax payroll wages uh payable uh where's the we don't just have payroll expense wait maybe they called it wages wages and salaries there we have it let's put it into that one i'll use the account that they provided us with and that's going to be for the 4583 and then we're going to have pay, payroll liability. So I'm going to say one, that's going to be, uh, I'm pulling this numbers over here, payroll 101063. So negative 1010.63, bringing the amount down. And this is going to be payroll. This is going to be payroll wages payable payroll taxes expense federal payroll liability let's do that one that looks good and then the others and then we're also going to have and then the net check is going to be the three five seven two so if i look at this uh again we're going to say okay does that make sense we got a net check that went out three five seven two he earned four five eight three we took from him the 101063 so basically payroll is going to go up by that he's only checked is going to be for that amount 
and the liability is going to be that. Is that what we have here? I think so. Let's save and add another and do the same for Erica. Let's say Erica Smith. And this is also happening on uh, Jan, not June, Jan 31st. And we're going to say that this is just going to be payroll quantity one amount here for her is going to be 2,400, 2,400 wages. And the other side, I'm doing this fast because we're running long on time here. One, and we're going to say the other side's going to uh, 54360, 543.60. Payroll, federal payroll liability. And then the difference is going to the uh, the paycheck, which is going to be the 2294. Two, something is not right here. Okay. Paso. Yeah, this needs to be negative. 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 Okay, so there we have it. So now we're at, that looks good. So that looks good. So let's save that. I'm going to save it and then we'll check out our financials balance sheet update. We should have a decrease to the checking account uh, for the for those amounts. And then the other side is going to go into we had the well, let's go to the payroll expense update the income statement. We've got wages. So there's the two amounts that went into the wages for a total of uh, the 698333 so that totals the amount here that looks good and then we had liabilities if i go back to my balance sheet federal liabilities that totals up to these two here or here the 15 uh i have to add this one the 1554 23 there and there and then i just need to do a journal entry for our portion of the payroll liabilities and then we'll be tied out so let's go back on over and do one more por favor and so i'm going to go to uh you have to go to the reports here so we'll go into the accounting reports and i'll do this with a journal we'll say journal report and then I'm going to say we want to add a new journal and the new journal is going to be uh, payroll tax. The date is going to be Jan 31st and we're not going to auto reverse it. No tax. We're going to say description payroll and then the account is going to be uh, payroll tax payroll tax not the payroll but payroll tax expense now and that's going to be for the amount of our portion which was the 47423 so let's say 474.23 and then the other side is going to go to payroll federal payroll liability again and there it is so this is our tax portion i think that's good Let's post it. We recommend you only, okay, whatever. Balance sheet, let's update it. No effect on cash that time, but now the payroll liability is at the 2028.46, which should match out the their portion of the payroll taxes, which is this plus the employer portion, 2028.46. And then we have on the income statement, we've got the well i have to update it got to work on up-to-dated stuff we got the wages and then we've got the payroll expenses notice the payroll expenses only include our portion of the payroll tax expenses i mean only include the employer portion why don't they include the employee portion of payroll taxes because they aren't in theory our taxes they are the taxes of the employee which we are just being used uh as the as the poor pathetic tax collector the government is forcing us to to collect on their behalf so that means that their payroll taxes are being expensed but they're in the form of gross wages that often confuses people 
So there we have it. So let's let's open up a trial balance and see where we stand at this point in time because we're running long on time here. We're going to go into the accounting reports and type in trial balance, trial balance. And let's do the range change up top, hitting the custom range 2023 end of the year updated. So if your numbers tie out to these numbers, great. If not, then uh, then try to change the range and see if it's a date range issue. You would think the accounts impacted from the last uh, time we checked our numbers. Last presentation would be the checking account that we changed. We changed the uh, liability account here for the payroll liability, and we changed some income statement accounts, including the wages and the payroll tax expense.